G'day and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Today I'm going to fill you in on my next project and it's going to be a diorama featuring the venerable Tamiya Krupp Protz light truck. Um, so this kit is about oh, almost 40 years old. I think it came out in like 1979, which is crazy. So it's like a 39 year old kit. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. <coughs> and um, yeah, I picked this up recently, you know, sometime in the last year or so, and I really realised now I want to build this again. I built one back in the 80s when I was a kid, and it was terrible, and I stuffed up the really complicated suspension really badly, and so I decided it's time to build one. So I've come up with an idea for a diorama. Shall I show you? Let's have a look. Um, my idea for a diorama is something like this. So I'm planning to do a bit of a bridge scene. The Krupp Protz has been held up by some kind of checkpoint or field police. And up the top here on the rail bridge, there's going to be two Soviet tankers waiting to ambush the truck. So dropping a grenade or something off the rail bridge into the back of the truck. Um, yeah, the, the bridge itself, it's something I've been wanting to build for a little while. I've been wanting to scratch build one. If you've ever been to Melbourne, or if any of you happen to live in Melbourne here in Australia, there's a bridge just near the Immigration Museum. Here we are on Google Street View. You can see there, Melbourne Tram. And this bridge here is the bridge that I want to try and build. Um, this bit in particular with these great arches. I'll see if I can find a clearer view. I hope it's okay to show Google images in a video. Didn't think of that. But yeah, how cool is that? And there's all this great metal work up the top that's going to be built. And, you know, a big chunk of weathered bricks. And... Yeah, I just think it's going to look amazing. I'm probably not going to include the Obey graffiti. But yeah, look at this detail up here. It's amazing. How good is that going to be? So, <coughs> that's the plan. Excuse me again. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. It's been a while since I did a diorama. And really looking forward to it. Luckily this time I didn't balls up the suspension. But it is terribly complicated. It's not exactly easy. It's not hard. But it's not snap and go. Um, so, I've already underpainted this brown, done an airspray layer, and then painted German grey over the top. And the wooden trailer, the, the wooden sort of body of the truck at the back there, I've painted it all wood because I really want this to be a weathered old war horse and um, you know, look like it's been in the wars, literally. So I've decided to yeah, paint each of the wooden pieces in a pretty convincing wood. And um, then I'm going to hairspray it and spray, you know, paint German grey over the top and then chip away at it. So that hopefully this lovely wood with this beautiful rusty metal surrounds will all show through nice and subtly. Yeah, pretty happy with that. The bit I'm most happy with is the uh, floor of the, the floor of the truck. How good is that? <coughs> Listen to me tooting my own trumpet. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. You know, for a piece that had no real texture, just some lines and a couple of bolts at the ends. I think that's a pretty convincing old weathered wood look. Again, a lot of it's going to get covered up. And the main way I've done this, so I started off with spraying it a kind of light, <coughs> excuse me, kind of light buff colour. And let's get some focus. And then just weather over the top of that with various washes of acrylics. Some black, some white, some green, some brown. And just, you know, really light filtered washes. Um, to you know, bring out those faded textures on individual planks. The other thing I've done, these side, I guess they're kind of de-mudding boards, like to you know, get yourself out of a, a bog situation, but these boards that go on the side of the truck, I've deliberately painted those a different colour of wood. I wanted them a bit more grey and a bit more faded, just so it's not so same-same. Um, yeah, so far, fairly happy. Now, I'm going to hairspray these. So these have already been hairsprayed. I'm going to hairspray these and then paint them German grey and then start some chipping. And the reason I'm doing it all piecemeal like this is that once this is all built together, I'll, um, I'll grab the instructions and I'll show you. <coughs> and I'll cough in the background. 
So once this is all put together, a la into this kind of box, back of a truck thing, is it's going to be really hard to get in with a toothbrush or toothpick or whatever and scrape away at the floor and scrape away authentically at the back plate there. So this gives me a whole lot more control to realistically scrape where it would have been worn as opposed to once it's all together trying to get into awkward angles. Fingers crossed it works. You know, you can see a couple of them have still dropped them on the sprue. Um, yeah, fingers crossed it works. I guess the main thing you have to keep in mind is to scrape away the paint when I'm gluing this together so that edges that meet like this will actually bond as opposed to trying to stick paint to paint. I want to make sure that there's bare plastic bonding with bare plastic. So I'm just keeping that in mind. Alright, time to move on. Oh, I should also mention, I got some cool Soviet tank crew from Evolution Miniatures. I've purchased those online, and these guys, ignore the dead guy, but these two wounded tankers, perfect for on my rail bridge, ducking down behind cover, and about to ambush a truck beneath them. Can't wait. Well, sadly, the first time I did my hairspray technique chipping away, <clears throat> I left the water too long on the bonnet area here, so chipped away, chipped away with a toothbrush, it looked great, it looked really subtle, and then I left the water while I concentrated on the fenders, and unfortunately it kept reacting, kept bubbling away, and then eventually I just ended up with a big chunky area here, where it had all just sloughed off. So, I sanded it back, and now I've splurged some more rust colours on, I just used my handy dandy AK Interactive rust colour set, it's really good, cost me like 28, 30 bucks. I use it regularly, very, very regularly. <coughs> so yeah, I've just been splodging a bit of rust on here and there where I could. I'm gonna re-hairspray it. Uh, I've also put a bit of rust onto this as well. Um, just, you know, starting the effect there. So you can see on this where the rust did chip through, you can see it on those fenders there, but it's pretty subtle. So, yeah, on those rounded bits, just sort of there and over here. <clears throat> but again, it's pretty subtle. So yeah, I think, back to the drawing board, let's try another round of hairspray chipping and see if we can get that looking better. Here's the grey as it currently stands, but I feel it's too dark, it's just too heavy, and I wanted a lot more sun fading. So you can see the bonnet here, to try and get a little focus. Yeah, struggling. The doormat's in focus. <clears throat> so yes, here's the bonnet, looking good and rusted, I'm happy with that, but it's just feeling a little bit too dark, I wanted a lot more sun fading, so I'm going to try it with a bit of a mix of German grey and white and light blue, we'll see if that makes a difference. Well, here's the revised paint job on the Krupp, so it's a lot lighter now, um, hope you get a sense of that, so there's quite, quite a few layers in this which I'm rather happy with. I feel like that's looking quite an authentic, weather-beaten paint job. And yeah, it's a lot lighter, it's a lot more sun-faded, darkness in the shadows, but it's a lot more multifaceted and a lot more multi-layered now, so I'm happy with that. <coughs> Excuse me. My wood chipping has you know, slightly... Look, I'm not thrilled with that, so I'm going to see what I can do there. That's pretty plug-ugly. But um, my wood chipping has worked out pretty well. It feels a little ham-fisted, perhaps. Um, a lot of the subtlety is gone in the chipping and the wear. But I'll see what I can do once I start weathering that with oils. So I've covered all this in a layer of Tamiya Flat Clear, and that's water-based. So these are all enamel paints, water-based layer of varnish on top, and then I can start doing some oil weathering. So I'm going to leave it there for now, come back soon and see how the new project is progressing. But otherwise, hope this has whetted your appetite for the next thing that's down the line, the next project. And uh, if you've got any questions, chime in below, but otherwise I'll check you next time on Dave's Water Workshop. See you guys. <laughs>